The first task at hand is to deploy our Strapi CMS to somewhere. And I did indicate that we're going to be deploying it to Heroku. Now, if you go to the Strapi docs, then you will find an entire section on deployment where you have some general guidelines, you know, database versions, operating system versions, you know, some information about the configuration files. And then if you scroll to the bottom of this page, you will find all the hosting provider guides. So these are, you know, essentially going to take you to resources um, about deployment. So maybe you want to deploy to DigitalOcean or you want to deploy to Google App Engine and you will find information here, including Heroku. So if you click that, these are the steps that we are going to be going through together. And of course, I'm on a Macintosh, so we're going to be uh, going through these steps together to deploy Strapi to Heroku. Now, there are a few prerequisites here, and I've already installed a few of them using Brew. So I installed the Heroku CLI. So I have that running and enabled on my machine, which is great. And I've also uh, did a Heroku login okay now you can press any key to open up the browser so i'm just going to do that and what this does it opens the heroku cli login which will allow you to log in sometimes and this is i think a common bug you you may get ip address mismatch and you don't need to worry all you need to do is cancel this and just find Heroku, and let me just show you the aid to that right here. Heroku login. And if you do it with a dash I, then that is going to log you in using the command prompt. So that's my email address, and then I will enter my password as well. And now I'm logged in to Heroku. So that's one step done. Now we've of course already created our Strapi project, so we don't need to uh, recreate that again. Uh, the one thing that we need to do is open up this project in our code editor because we'll be using um, this to apply some changes. And the one and first change that they ask you to do uh, in the Strapi docs is to come to the .gitignore file, go to the very end, and add package log.json because every now and then it could cause some problems when you're deploying to Heroku. And then let's go back to my command prompt. And inside the project folder, I'm going to call git init, and I'm going to call git add, and I'm going to add all the, the repository and um, all the files to my repository, and then do an init commit, an initial commit. And now all the files that I've created, including the schemas and, and stuff, have now been committed. And I'm going to create a new Heroku project. And I'm going to use the Heroku CLI, which as I said, I installed using Brew. I'm going to type in Heroku create. And this will create an app. So this is going to be uh, essentially our app where we can go and check our Strapi instance. So this is Secret Cliffs. And at this point in time, we can now set up Postgres SQL as well. Now, how do we do that? Well, we're going to call Heroku add-ons create, and we're going to specify Heroku post, Postgres SQL hobby dev. Hobby dev is essentially a, you know, a free uh, database with very limited resources. So if you need to there's a typo there. So if you need to have more resources, if, you know, if you're doing this really in production and you want to get up and running with Strapi, you would need to probably go on a different tier in Heroku as opposed to Hobbydev. Uh, you can take a look at the packages. Of course, those are going to be paid, uh, but they do have lots of options available for you. And do notice that because I just created an app, this database is going to be automatically attached to that secret cliffs application that I created, right? And as you can see, this is free. Um, okay, we have a database empty, that's fine, and created this uh, database uh, URL for us. Okay, this is great. So now, 
we can type in Heroku config. And this is going to be our database URL, including the username and password and the location of this Postgres database. And you can see it's on Amazon's Elastic Computing. So that's the database URL that we need to use inside Strapi. So we need to then, let me just copy this. Let's just copy this because we uh, will need this later. I'm just going to copy that and save it somewhere. And so now what I'll do is just say yarn add PG connection string. So PG connection string is a very useful package for basically using that Postgres database URL, this package will be able to pause that and we can feed the right information into Strapi. So we're going to be using this PG connection string package to uh, help our codes when it comes to the database uh, uh, connectivity. And then I'll go to my code editor. And what we need to do now is create a configuration file, a database configuration file for production. So I'm going to create a new subfolder in the config folder, and I'm going to call that env, and then another subfolder in there, which is going to be called production like so okay so now we have slash config slash env slash production and i'm going to create a database.js file in that location again config and production database.js and then i'm going to be copying some code over which will look like this and notice i use that pg connection string which we've just installed we're then going to pass the database URL, which we can access from process.env because this database URL will be available for us once we deploy everything to Postgres. And then here are the connection details. So what this will do is it will allow us to connect to that Postgres uh, database. And then we also need to set the node environment for Heroku. So I'm going to type in Heroku config set node underscore EMV to be equal to production. So we set our node.js environment to production. Okay, then we're going to go back to my editor and then I'm going to create a new file on the, the production folder, I'm going to call that server.js and I'm going to export the Heroku URL. And we need to now set this my Heroku URL environment variable on our own, but we can do that with a very easy one-liner statement, which I'm going to copy and add here. So we're going to say Heroku config set the my Heroku URL environment variable to the value of, and we're calling Heroku info uh, hyphen s, grabbing the web URL, and then just grabbing the right bits and pieces from it. And there you go. So now we have my Heroku URL set to the right Heroku URL. This will be picked up, or this was done you know, automatically for us which is great. So now again, in this project folder, we need to install one more package, which is going to be yarn add PG. Which is the appropriate Postgres package. And we will also need to configure the app keys. Okay, are we going to be calling that using the Heroku config set CLI command. And this is how the command would look like. So we're setting these app keys, which are going to be required by Strapi, and we assign that to the application that we have created. Okay, so we set these application keys, which is awesome. And I think the last step that we need to do now is going to be to commit these changes, install the potentially making, missing packages for your unlock file, and then we are ready to deploy.
type in git add dot git commit uh, and say updated db config okay that's done let's do a yarn install okay everything is up to date now i'm going to add yarn dot lock git commit updated yarn dot lock file hopefully that's okay that's already in there and now we're going to say git push heroku head main so let's see if this is going to work now all right so basically heroku is going to take our github repository see all those files in it start up everything do the installation and then in about a couple of minutes we should be able to go to our project that is running on heroku so let's wait for these commands to finish running all right so our installation is now complete which means that if i just scroll a little bit up you see familiar messages in here strappy build webpack compiled successfully admin ui built successfully and then the last message should be verify and deploy um, and if you see this then this pretty much means that the deployment has been completed now what you can do you can go to your heroku account and go to the dashboard and you see i have a few instances running in here there's one called secret clips so that's our deployment and you can come here and take a look at you know if you click here more view the logs so you can take a look at potentially the logs here um, you can also go back and take a look at the resources and you see that there is an attached database which is for free which is attached to our container here on Heroku. So I'm just going to press on open app and see what happens. And what we have is a Strapi instance running successfully. Okay, also notice we no longer have development here. It is now in production. So this is a production version. So how does Strapi differentiate between production and development? Remember we set the node environment to be production and Strapi is looking for that environment variable essentially. So now if I go to forward slash admin, then I can set up my super administrator here and press let's start. All right, so this is now the production version of our strappy instance you will notice that we have the content types if i go to the content builder we have film review and user we do have the avatar and we had everything in place except for the data so data does not get ported automatically from development to production so you could either potentially create a script that does this um, there are various strategies that you can find um, but what i'll do i'm just going to type in all the information again but as i said maybe as a homework you could write a script that takes uh, you know an object uh, from json and then uh, using you know various fetch api calls you just populate the strap instance programmatically so you can do that as well what i'll do i'm just going to create these entries now the one thing that you will also notice before i actually do that um we have this message i don't know if you saw that but you know you can pause the video so if i just refresh this page it's going to appear as a pop-up right here that says the auto real features required to use this plugin start your server with strappy dev and you also don't see a way to modify your content type so because you're running in production mode your content types cannot be changed what you need to do you need to go back to your development environment you need to make the changes there you need to commit those changes and then push those changes to git which will then automatically push those changes to heroku it will update and then your production system will also update so I'm going to populate the data, but we are ready with our Heroku deployment. This is now running in a 
production setting. Now, once I set the data, we'd also need to come here and check, you know, the roles and the providers and, and all that information that we that we had. I'm sorry, uh, just roles and then public and then make sure that these are also checked accordingly to replicate exactly the setup that we had on the development environment. So remember films, reviews and the Slugify plugin, you will need to make those changes there. OK, I'm going to populate the data, make those changes, and then in the next video, we'll take a look at how to deploy our Next.js application to Vercel.